All right, we're gonna look at a limiting reagent reaction between copper as a metal and silver nitrate. As an ion, it's going to create copper nitrate and silver, and it's gonna create copper two nitrate, so you're gonna make sure you have to write a nice balanced reaction. Um, if you wanna take and write it incorrectly so it looks like it's got the right superscript, so it's got the arrow, you're going to need to use this little F of X key. This is in LaTeX if you care, um, and some of the instructions to take and type it in in LaTeX are here. If you can't use it or it seems a little complicated, just go ahead and type it in as best you can. You make sure that you balance your equation because in order to figure out what's going to be limiting and how much silver you're going to make, you have to have the correct ratio between the copper and the silver nitrate. So you're going to start out by answering some nice questions on the amount of your silver and your, and your nitrate. So you're going to take, you're going to lock your answer, and you're going to come down here, and you're going to make a prediction. Now I'm going to run this through with trial number three. And you guys will not be doing trial number three for your um, experiment, so that's going to work out fine. Now, you're going to have to take a lot of little shots as you go here. So I've got trial three up, and I'm going to hit our play. First of all, and the first thing, if you're like me and you missed, was that there's a piece of filter paper right over there on the far right-hand side at 0.81 grams. Make sure you record that because that's going to be our starting point. So. 0.81 grams on the filter paper, and we're going to take and put it in. Now, we're going to have a bottle of silver nitrate, but we're not going to actually weigh it at the end, so it doesn't really matter. What instead is, is we're going to have a beaker. Now, the mass of the beaker is here, so make sure you write that down. And you're going to take and you're going to add some of the silver nitrate. So once you've added some silver nitrate, again, write that value down. You're going to need to write the masses down for every space or every time they sort of stop or every time the mass changes because we're going to be adding stuff. So we're going to take that 92.92, which is our beaker in the silver nitrate. We're going to add some water and we're going to now need to know what that mass is because that's going to be the total weight of this entire system that we're going to be looking at. And then you're going to take and you're going to put in a piece of copper. Now, they're not going to let this react completely. They're just going to take and do some a little bit of an experiment so that you don't know which one you ran out of. So at some point, we're going to have to figure out which one we ran out of. So with that, we've stopped measuring things. So we have a couple of measurements here. And if we look at it, we're going to have, and they're going to ask you to do trial one first. But after um, you take a quick look at trial one, and that's just to figure out how much silver um, nitrate you start with just so that you know what you, how your calculations are supposed to go. You're going to start with your trial and you're going to figure out how much silver you had, how much copper you have. So first of all, how much copper? So you're going to have to figure out the grams of the copper and you're going to be able to get the grams of the copper from going back and looking at this and realizing, and you can move this at any time you want, you know how much water silver nitrate and a beaker you have and then you're going to put in the silver and you're going to know the mass of the water beaker silver nitrate and the piece of copper so if you take and subtract everything but the final um from the final mass here subtract the beaker the water and the silver nitrate you can figure out how many grams of copper you have in this all right so we got our grams of copper. So we're going to go down here and figure out grams to moles. Well, we can go from grams to moles using molar mass, and I'll show the calculation in a different video. And you're going to take and figure out which one is limiting. Now, figure out which one is limiting, you have to have a balanced equation. And I'm going to leave that one to you. So after you've got your nice balanced equation, you know what's limiting, and you are going to predict the amount of silver that should be produced. All right. So once you've done that, you're going to do a second trial. You're going to do a second trial because you're going to have a different limiting reagent. And when you do your second trial, you're going to have to take and figure out how much you have for that. So you're just going to go back to your reaction. And I'm going to obviously have done three, but you're going to pick a different one. So let's say you pick four, and you're going to take and do the exact same thing where you have a mass of your filter paper, you've got your beaker, and you're going to take and you're going to play it. They're going to put the filter paper over into the filter. They're going to take your silver nitrate. We don't care about that mass. They're going to have the beaker. You're going to add the silver nitrate to it. Subtract the mass of the beaker to get the silver nitrate. You're going to add some water to it, and that's just so that we can get a reaction occurring. You're going to make sure you write down that mass because that's going to help you figure out when you do the next step, which is you're going to put in some copper. Now, your copper here, remember the mass of the copper? 
you just subtract the mass of everything else on that balance, it's going to give you the copper. And then they're going to take and let the reaction to occur. Now, again, they're not going to let it go to completion so that we can figure out here, without looking at it, we're going to do from the math what our limiting reagent is. So you're going to figure out what your limiting reagent is. You're going to predict how much stuff you should make. And when you do that, you're going to lock your answer and you're going to go to the results. Now, when we go to the results, what it's going to do for this one is I'm going to back to trial three and I'm going to load it. And it's going to start the same way with everything that we have done before, except that this time, as you go through, and I'm just going to fast forward it here. I'm going to take as I go through and it's going to allow the reaction to finish. So as I've got the copper in here and I've got it reacting, it's going to keep going and it's going to continue to react until the reaction is actually complete. And when we do this, we're going to take out um, what is remaining. It's taking all the silver. So that's um, little chunky stuff that's up there in the filter is our silver that we have produced and we're just rinsing it out of everything, giving it a good clean, and then taking that filter paper and just letting it dry for 24 hours, and then we're gonna weigh it. Remembering when you weigh it to subtract the mass of that filter paper that you had to begin with. And there is something else left over and you're gonna to need to figure out what that is. So once you have done that, you're gonna take and be asked how much was produced, how did it compare? What was your limiting reagent in part two? And then we're going to ask, why aren't they exactly the same? And then we're going to ask you to calculate your percent error, where your percent error is the predicted amount of silver from your calculations minus the actual mass of silver, which we just got from this experiment here, just that piece right above there. That would be our actual mass. Remember to subtract the mass of this piece of paper. That's our filter paper. And when we do those, guys, we're going to get our percent error. Um, when you're done, you just type your values in and it's going to be saved. All right.